we are starting the electrochemistry chapter now. Electrochemistry is based on redox reactions. And redox reactions, to identify them and work with them, we have to know oxidation states of our elements. So we have a set of rules for assigning oxidation states that we use to um, help us with these. Some of these we have been using along. Um, so the second one, we've been knowing a number of rules for identifying the charge of monatomic ions. So those charges are the oxidation states. Uh, the first rule for elements, we um, elements that are not ionic are going to have charges of zero. It doesn't matter uh, how many atoms are present. If it's non-ionic, uh, it has a charge of zero. We're going to use summation rules. Uh, the summation of all the oxidation states for all the atoms will add up to zero for a neutral compound or add up to the ionic charge for the polyatomic Ion. Uh, group one metals we already know have a charge of plus one that's their oxidation state group two metals the alkaline earth they have a charge of plus two that's their oxidation state so now we have some rules that are hierarchical so the ones that come first are higher priority uh, fluorine in a compound is always going to be given value of negative one. It's the most electronegative element there is. Hydrogen in uh, most compounds is going to be a plus one. Only when hydrogen is combined with a metal does hydrogen become a negative one. Oxygen is usually a negative two. Uh, peroxide is a negative one. The only peroxide I expect us to recognize is H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. Just because a compound has O2 in the formula does not make it a peroxide. So we're identifying peroxides by name, except for H2O2, which we should recognize as hydrogen peroxide. We're not going to see any superoxides. Um, and, but when oxygen and fluorine are in the same compound, fluorine wins out the charge of negative one then oxygen can be some other charge, including positive numbers. And we get that from the summation rules. Halogens, except for fluorine, are generally negative one. When they are combined with fluorine or oxygen, they can be other numbers, including positive numbers. And we get them from the summation rules. Our oxygen group, um, oxygen, sulfur, et cetera, we accept, expect them to be a negative two. Um, and then our uh, nitrogen group, we expect them to be a negative three. Uh, we get down to these bottom two rules occasionally. They're not too common. So let's practice doing some oxidation numbers. So we go through and we assign the easy ones first, and there's usually just one left that we use the summation rule to get. So our oxygen will sign a negative two. Oxygen in a compound is normally negative two. The nitrogen will get by summation rule. So we do a nitrogen plus two O's. So that's nitrogen plus two times negative two will add up to a zero. So two times negative two is negative four. We're gonna need a positive four on that nitrogen to make that add up to zero. Potassium permanganate. We know that potassium forms a plus one ion. We're going to assign oxygen a negative two and use the summation rule to get the manganese. So K plus MN plus four oxygens as a plus one plus her M 
10 plus 4 times negative 2, all that add up to 0. So we have negative 8, add 1, we have negative 7, we need a positive 7 on that manganese. And then per chlorate, we assign our negative 2 for the oxygen, use some mason rule for chlorine. In this case, this is all going to add up to the charge, which is a negative 1. So chlorine plus 4 oxygen will add up to negative 1. Uh, 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. We move it to the other side, we become positive 8. 8 minus 1 will give us a plus 7 for the chlorine. Calcium carbide, we know that uh, the calcium is going to be a plus 2. Use some mason rule for the carbon. So calcium plus two carbons equals our zero. So plus two plus two times carbon equals a zero. We're going to need a negative one in here to make negative two to cancel off the positive two. So carbon is a negative one. And when we identify the oxidation numbers on a per atom basis, so I'm not going to take the negative one for the carbon multiplied by two. We want to see what it is on a per atom basis. Sodium nitrate, we're going to sign plus one for our sodium, negative two for the oxygen. So sodium plus nitrogen plus three oxygens adds up to zero. So we have our plus one plus nitrogen plus three times negative two. At the zero, we have a negative six plus one gives us a negative five. We need a positive five for that nitrogen to add up to zero. Sulfate, we do a negative two for the oxygen. Sulfur plus four oxygens adds up to our negative two, the charge. Sulfur plus four times negative two equals negative two. So we have a negative 8 moved to the other side. We have positive 8 minus 2 gives us a plus 6. Plus 6 on that sulfur. So that's assigning our oxidation states. So we're going to look down here and do the same process uh, through these compounds also. So we assign the easy ones. Um, So we have our negative twos for the oxygen, plus ones for the hydrogens. The sulfate, we have that in our sulfuric acid here. So we have our two times four is negative eight, uh, plus a two times one, that gives a negative six. That sulfur is still plus six for that sulfate. Uh, over here, we have three times negative two, is a negative six, we need a plus six for the sulfur. Next row down, carbon is an element, so it's zero. We have a minus two for oxygen. So carbon and sulfur, on this list here, carbon never shoulders up. Uh, sulfur is our second to bottom rule, so sulfur is our minus two. We have minus two for that uh, oxygen. So on this one, we have two times negative two is a negative four. We need a positive four for that sulfur. Two times negative two is a negative four. We need a positive four for that carbon. Over here, we have negative two. We need a positive two for the carbon. So in the last row, silver, we know is a plus one. Oxygen is a negative two. So we have three negative twos. Uh, that's a negative six plus one is a negative five. We need a positive five for that nitrogen. Elemental copper is zero. Elemental sulfur is zero. Copper nitrate, we see by the charge here that the copper is a plus two. The oxygen is a negative two. 
we have um, a nitrate here, NO3. We saw a little nitrate over here, NO3. We saw nitrate up here, NO3. So nitrate isn't changing, so the nitrate remains the same. So we have plus five, plus five, so it'll still be a plus five over here. So the nitrate doesn't change, so we know that the nitrogen is not changing also. So we, if we see any change of oxidation numbers, we know it's a redox reaction. If we have um, one element changing in one direction, we need to have a, another element change in the opposite direction. So first, let's ask these, ask the question: Are these redox reactions? So we look for changes in oxidation numbers. So when sulfur is six, it's still six. Our oxygen negative two, negative two, negative two, no changes. Our hydrogen plus one, plus one, no changes. So this first reaction is not redox. On the second reaction, carbon is zero, and then it's a plus four and a plus two. So it has changed. That means we, um, Should expect some other change going on here. Sulfur is a positive four, it turns into a negative two. Our oxygen is negative two, negative two, so that has not changed. So we have some changes in our oxidation numbers. That means this is redox. On the bottom one, we see our silver goes from a plus one to zero. We see our copper going from a zero to a plus two. So this is also redox. So the two different reactions, we have two reactions going on here at the same time. Uh, this is a oxidation reduction reaction. So oxidation is going to be an increase of oxidation number. Uh, it does this by losing electrons. So electrons will show up as part of the product in what is called a half reaction. So we're increasing oxidation number is oxidation. If we reduce our oxidation number, it's reduction. And we do this by consuming electrons. So electrons will show up as a reactant uh, in our half reactions. So let's identify oxidation and reduction parts of this uh, process. So the first one's not a redox, so there's nothing to do there. Over here, we have carbon going in two directions. We have carbon going to a plus four and a plus two. It's the same direction, actually, but in two different results. Uh, so we are increasing our oxidation number from zero to four or zero to two, both increases. So this is oxidation. So if something's being oxidized, something has to be reduced at the same time. And that is a sulfur. It's going from a positive four to a negative two. So that is our reduction. On the last reaction, we see our silver going from a positive one to a zero. We're reducing that number, so this reduction. Copper is going from a zero to a plus two. We're increasing that number, that is oxidation. We have one more category on these compounds. Which are the agents. Now, if you happen to know any Hollywood acting agents, they don't act. They help somebody else to act. So like a reducing agent doesn't get reduced. It helps something else to get reduced. And the process is going to get oxidized. An oxidizing agent 
will oxidize something else, but in the process, it's going to get reduced. So some um, examples of, of what uh, common oxidizing agents are, potassium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, nitric acid, chlorate, sodium chlorate, uh, perchlorates, ozone peroxides, potassium permanganate, these are common oxidizing agents. They will oxidize something else, they will oxidize a fuel. A reducing agent, um, uh, carbon, coke, charcoal, uh, is a traditional one for reducing iron ore down to iron. Um, and around the lab, we also use hydrogen, lithium, aluminum, hydride. So uh, carbon, that could be considered to be a fuel. Um, so the fuels get oxidized, or the reducing agents get oxidized by the oxidizing agent. The oxidizing agents get reduced by the reducing agent. And the agents are always going to be reactants. And we are going to list the whole compound as uh, agents also, not just the element. So we can say that the sulfur is being reduced here. But uh, in the process, the sulfur is helping to oxidize the carbon. But we'll say the whole compound. So the oxidizing agent is SO2. So the sulfur dioxide is the oxidizing agent. It's causing the carbon to be oxidized. The carbon is causing the sulfur to be reduced. So our reducing agent is the carbon. So the silver is being reduced, but it's doing that by causing the oxidation of copper. So the silver nitrate is our oxidation agent. Whereas the copper is being oxidized by doing that by reducing the silver, copper is our reducing agent. So now we should be able to assign oxidation numbers, use that to decide whether we have a redox reaction or not, assign what is being reduced and oxidized, and then assign what's being the agents. The um, next part that we'll be playing with in the next video is balancing. And these are gonna be balanced based on half reactions. So these lines here are connecting the half reactions that um, will be pulling out of a reaction. So the reduction reaction would be our silver nitrate going down to silver. So we would draw that by itself without the copper components. And we'd be able to balance that by itself as a half reaction. And uh, let me just give that net half reactions here. So we have our AG plus, we're doing a reduction, we will consume an electron and we form our AG. So that is the reduction re half reaction without the other components. And um, for the copper, we're going from a copper to a Cu two plus, that means we give off our two electrons. So this is our oxidation. This is our reduction. So again, the oxidation of the electron is gonna be one of the product, parts of the product. And in a reduction, the electron is gonna be as part of the reactants. So we'll, balance these reactions on our next video.